Right, hey guys, welcome back to part 3 of my How to Create Rust Plugins tutorial series. In this part we're going to be covering hooks and their functionality, so let's just get right into it. We got our server started up here, Rust is open, we're going to connect to the server, also open up our project file, and just while this is loading I'm going to go over basically what we're going to be covering in this video. So, Alright, so here we have the umod API documentation. This is available on the website, umod.org, slash documentation, slash game, slash rust. I will put a link for this in, in the description so you can get to it easily. And what this is, is basically a web page which contains all of these hooks that you can use to whatever you desire. So for example, in this video, we're going to be covering on player connected or on player joined. As well as on player death. So these are two that I'm just going to use for this example. So we can see when a player connects to the server, as well as when a player dies, it'll just display some very basic info in the chat. All right, so let's get right into that. So now that we're in the server, we have our project open. What I'm going to do here is go on player connected in the umod documentation, and I'm just going to see what it uh, requires of us. So we're just going to copy this and paste it in there. And as you can see, we have our hook in the game. So any time that a player connects in this example, it will return the player that connected. And then the way we can use that is really simple. We can just say server.broadcast. And let's just say player.displayName has connected. Just for this example. So once again, whenever a player connects, it will call this hook on player connected. It will give us the player that connected, and we can use that to for whatever we need. Uh, so let's save that and load it up. Drop the plugin in there. Plugin's been loaded. Now we're just going to disconnect and reconnect. And as you can see here, it says Slappy Bacon has connected. You can make this message whatever you want. You could also have, like, for example, a list of different messages that you'd like to say, something random or funny. I don't know. Things like that. I mean, that's basically all there is to know for that hook. It's a very simple hook. It just returns a player. Alright, now that's covered. I'm going to show you guys the on player death and what you can use with that. Alright, so in this example, we're going to create a kill feed. And the kill feed is going to go something like player killed player. We can even say like with with weapon. Something like that. So we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing. Copy the hook over just to make our lives simpler. And as you can see here, so this hook on player death is going to provide us with the player that died, as well as the hit info. I'll show you guys a little bit about the hit info because it contains a good amount of information in there. So let's just go ahead and do that. So on player death, we're just gonna say server.broadcast uh, player dot display name plus we'll say was killed by and this is where we need to read our hit info so our hit info is provided right here once again so we're going to say info dot and as you can see there is all this information that you can use so feel free to totally experiment with this a bit and get a feeling for some of the hit info variables that are provided 
Alright, so as you can see here, if you go all the way, to, all the way down to the bottom, you, it'll tell you which weapon was used. And somewhere in here there should be a attacker or the initiator. So the initiator is the entity which initiated the kill. So not the player that was killed, but the person who shot the other person, for example. So initiator dot say display oh say name. Let's just try that out. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna do get rid of that. Save, unload, load that back in there, and then we're just gonna try and kill ourselves. See what happens. So as you can see, Sloppy Bacon was killed by, and it just says assets prefab player, player dot prefab. So this is just saying that I was killed by, I guess, a generic player. Um, but I'm going to show you guys what happens if, let's say we get killed by a bandit camp guard or something like that. So I'm just going to pull out an AK. Now let's give us some bullets. fly in there. And as you can see, it says Sloppy Bacon was killed by Assets Prefab NPC Bandit Guard Bandit Guard. And you could um actually format this to be just like a small segment, I guess, if you wanted to. So let's say um instead of using the name here, let's say a uh, short prefab name. Instead of the name, we're going to use the short prefab name, which should just be this last portion here. So we're just going to unload that, load it back in. And we're just going to do that same thing. as you can see, it just says Slavy Bacon was killed by a bandit guard. So let's say, for example, it was a player though, and we don't want it to say Slavy Bacon was killed by player prefab or something. Yeah, you would rather have it say the player's name, right? So what you can do uh, is do a try catch statement. Um, so what it's going to try and do is try and get the player, but if the player's not there, then it's going to just display the prefab. So the way you would do that is say try and then you have to add a catch statement. So if whatever in here doesn't run properly, it's going to catch it and run this. So we're just going to cut that, paste it there and there. And what we're going to say is try and find the player. So we're just going to write that as base player player or base player killer. Let's call it the killer. Equals info dot initiator player. And so what that means is it's going to try and get this. Uh, it's going to try and get this player, but if it doesn't. If the player, if whatever killed the player wasn't a player, it's going to display this instead. So we're just going to say killer dot display name. We're going to save that, and then we're going to unload and load it again. So as you can see here, it says Sloppy Bacon was killed by Sloppy Bacon, um, but. Also, if I go back over to Bandit Camp, it should say, because the bandit was not a player, 
it will say player was killed by whatever the bandit's name was. And if you wanted to go even further with this, what you could say is if if the uh, if the player initiator player, so the player who who killed the player is the same, then you can print in the chat player committed suicide. So let's try that. So if player equals equals, so this is comparing info dot initiator player, then we're just going to say we're going to server broadcast this player name has oh, so he killed himself killed himself and then we're just going to return null so essentially what returning null does in this instance is it's going to stop doing this hook so the hook will not continue to do the rest of this so if I committed suicide it will say this player has committed suicide and then it will stop the hook so it doesn't continue to run this okay so let's try that so if the player is equal to the initiator player we're going to server broadcast player display name killed himself let's try that again load the plugin kill and now what we should see is Sloppy Bacon killed himself. And just for an example, um, I'm going to take away this return null so you guys can see what happens if I don't put that there. So it's essentially going to run through this, and then it's going to try and do this, because I never, I never said that I want it to stop right here. So let's just, let's just see what happens there as well. This is a very common uh, mistake happens all the time. Sometimes you're like, hey, like, I did that thing that I wanted to do, but it's also doing the next step in case it wasn't uh, the suicide case, for example. So as you can see, it says Sloppy Bacon killed himself, but then it also says Sloppy Bacon killed Sloppy Bacon underneath. So that's why you want to have that return null statement. So it essentially cancels out all of this. Honestly, I think that's about it for the hooks. Um, there are plenty of hooks that you can access here, and they all have information about their functionality as well as the variables which are provided to you. So for example, let's say on player chat, right here, for example. Let's uh, let's just add that right there. Um, oh, and in case you're not familiar with what I just did there, uh, there's a little uh, hotkey. So if you ever have these little red underlines and saying like, "Hey, I don't know what that is," you can press Alt Enter and it will come up with a correction for you. So you can actually list, read through a little list of corrections, and click on one, and maybe it'll help what you're trying to do, maybe it won't. Uh, but th for this example, so you see on player chat, so anytime a player chats, it will give you the player that sent the message, it will give you the string, and it will give you the chat channel. So you can manipulate those or use them however you want. And that's about it. I don't want to get too in-depth. I want you guys to kind of explore this a bit. I'll be getting into some more in-depth functions and methods. So I'm just going to leave that there for you guys. Yeah, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed and have fun exploring the rest of this emod documentation. Alright guys, take it easy. Thanks for watching.